Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello everybody. Today, uh, John Coleman, my partner, my wonderful partner and I uh, get to speak with one of our favorite guests, Bill Jordan. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, guys. I hope you are. We are. Bill, good to see you, Bill. Good hey, to be uh, seen. Uh, Bill, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm embracing the boom this uh, morning. Oh, uh, yep. Every morning. As I. Every morning. And, Every uh, morning. In in between bracing the boom, embracing the boom, we let the dogs out. We got two dogs now. I think we're dog people. I'm not sure. Uh, Art, we are. Uh, did you used to have pets? I my la my last uh, dog that I owned was an English bulldog. Oh, yeah. very appropriate. That's when the master looks like the dog. Yes, well, as the spitting image, we came from the same litter. <laughs> Some people would say. So, uh, Bill, I know you are a dog people because you have in the past not only talked about uh, your two dogs, you just got back from the beach, your dogs greeted you, but you also have talked about your grand dog. Yes. Now, what, is it, what is it about dogs that they become more than family i mean they become people family you know i think you have to um have a dog you, you know you don't own a dog the dog has you actually um if you're not a dog person people you just don't get it but if you're a dog person you know exactly what we're talking about the dog is the you know is another one of those facebook philosophy one of those memes about the dog is the only thing that loves you more than it loves itself um there's just that bond between dogs, man. And I swear to you, when we got one of our dogs, uh, Roxy's a rescue. She's a pit bull mix. And uh, the lady who had her uh, in sort of foster care while they were looking for her to uh, to find somebody, hopefully to adopt her, uh, brought her here to visit and to see if she got along with our other dog. Um, Roxy had no personality. I've never met a dog before like that in my life. And we adopted her. And now, I mean, she is just, and it's been years, but she's got a sense of humor. I swear to you, the dogs laugh. If you own dogs, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they laugh. They can mess with you. They play. They love. They, they're they great listeners. Dogs are great listeners. They may not always obey you, but they, they are very good listeners. There's just that, I don't know. Hey, I, I think there's a thing about that DNA between dogs and humans. It's really kind of close. You know, the I opposable thumbs, were, they're missing that opposable thumbs thing, but they do have that dew claw. <laughs> well, I don't know about the listening part, right? My dogs listen to my wife, and when I talk to them, they go, hmm, hmm, yeah, hmm, yeah. So <laughs> it's different in every family, I guess. But you said you have a grand dog. What is a grand dog? Well, that's my. that's our daughter's dog. That's okay. our daughter's dog. It's not like dog offspring from our dogs. That's no, it's our daughter's dog and our dogs, Sophie and and uh, Roxy. Sophie being a golden doodle, mostly doodle, uh, and then Roxy, the pit bull mix. Uh, Jessica, our human daughter. Um, we they're her they're sisters. I mean, and that's kind of how we talk about them. They're sisters. So her dog is our grand dog and then is sophie and roxy's nephew <laughs> you guys you guys are what are there step dogs also no they're not step dogs i mean huh? it's just uh no they're, i've, no, I've, I've never related, related by blood i'm being yeah. i'm being silly i guess <laughs> oh you you are the one okay, oh, okay. all right <laughs> I don't think we're alone in this. I don't think we're alone in the referencing of our dogs as our as our kids or children or that we're the mom and dad or right. their sister sister or brother to some other child you may have in the house. I don't right. think we're that odd. And that's that's that bond that we have with dogs. Now, we've had cats before. We've had two cats that were actually pretty good. I'm not really a cat guy, but the, the cats were great because why? They were raised with dogs. We had one cat that would bark. <laughs> it would look out the window and make this little crack, crack, sound like it was trying to bark and uh, and would come when you called and the whole bit. So uh, raised with dogs. I don't know if people, maybe they call cats.
cats. I don't know if they call them like their kids or come. To, I guess they do if you're a cat person. Sure. I don't know. There's just something about dogs. I've always had dogs, and I can't imagine life without them. Yeah. Well, our our pets do become our babies one way or the other. Um, I, actually, I'm not sure about the grand dog thing. My daughters, all my uh, children have dogs, and um, we don't consider them grand dogs, but we do babysit them once in a while. They're part of the family. You know. Well, I think maybe after today's discussion, you just may start viewing them as your grand dog. So, uh, Phil, uh, Phil, you just recently returned from the beach. Did you bring uh, your dogs with you? No, our dogs stayed home. We have a we have a young man from up the street who's a great dog sitter, and he comes over and loves them. And then he came over uh, last evening after we had gotten home, and they tore him up. It's like, gee, are you guys glad to see us or him? Yeah. So... Uh, now, he does a great job for us, and it was really, I mean, I love our dogs, but just like sometimes with family, with like real human family, you, you need a little bit of uh, a break time. So it was nice to go to the beach and not have to make sure I was up and feeding them by 7 o'clock or let them out at 10 o'clock at night. I, if I wanted to go to bed and read at 8.30, I could do it, and I didn't have to worry about it. So that was a nice little break, but we we missed them. We missed now, them. It's, is the reverse true that they get a break? So, hey— Hey, they're gone. They're gone for the whole week. Let's tear up some newspaper. Party. <laughs> you know what? The house was in pretty good shape when we returned. It was no worse than when I had it by myself for a few days before I joined my wife. She was at the beach, and then I had uh, like three days alone time, and then I went down and joined her down at the beach. So uh, they didn't tear anything up. Mm. I may have. <laughs> good dogs, good dogs. And you know, when you travel, when you when you leave, have to leave the dogs because you can't take dogs everywhere. A lot of people take their dogs with them as much as possible. We right. always leave them at home because we've just had with our dogs, we've had um, uh, some bad experiences in terms of um, traveling with them. But we've also had them in kennels, and and yeah. that just does, for our dogs. It, maybe it's for us. It just doesn't work. It's much better to have a house sitter, a, a dog sitter like you have. Yeah, we've lucked uh, into this young man. And we've done the kennels before, and, but and sometimes you know you go a full week or maybe even a little bit longer. And not only is it psychologically, I I think it, they it scars them a little bit. I I hate to sound cheap, but man, it's expensive. Oh yeah, wow, it's expensive. Yeah, and it's hard to find the good ones. There's yeah. good ones and bad ones, and it's hard yeah, to Yeah, it's find. not like your dog can come home and say, you know what they did to me in there? Oh, yeah, they can. <laughs> well, that's that's uh. why we stopped using kennels, because we couldn't find a good one, and the dogs, you can see the difference in the dogs, you know. All right, so so guys, we've been, I actually I like dogs. Uh, I've had a couple of dogs. Uh, the, the last one, though, was a good 20 years ago. Um, but... I really like dogs, but what I really don't like, and something that I hate, nobody who's talking about dogs ever talks about on air, is blue scented bags. Those blue scented bags that all the dog lovers. Oh, the and poop my, bags. Ah. The it, poop bags. And it, it has a, I, I, I didn't want, I didn't know if you could say that in, oh, in, sure. in, in, in public. So are you. We're all adults. Uh, so are you poop dog. Uh, uh, experts because that's yes. something i never want to when i was would, would dog sit uh my son's dog uh they would they would always on the leash have about uh six or seven bags tied there so that i wouldn't have to go looking for it uh because the first couple of times i watched him i brought along a, z a zip a zip bag which i turned Ew. in which i turned which i had to turn inside out so i could and then zip. so now you laugh at here. So this is obviously something that it's one of those little hidden things about owning a dog that people don't want to talk about. But you must well, like you must like that part of it. No, no. Here's the thing: it, when we do take our dogs to the beach, because there's a place we stay that do does allow them, uh, and we do take them. Uh, if we walk them, I don't buy the doggy bags. I'll just take a couple of grocery bags and double up because invariably there's a there's a hole in one of them so I'll, I'll i'll double up on them and have a pocket full of them right because we're walking two dogs as soon as they hit the sand for the beach it's like somebody throws a switch okay it's time to poop and then uh, they do that and then i you know run down the 50 yards to the trash can now what i was what made what you said was making me laugh was 
few years ago, I was looking out my front door here at our home in our subdivision, and this guy was walking his dog in by my, my, my house, and the dog stopped to do his business. And so I'm watching this. And sure enough, the guy took the bag out, and he put it in the bag, and then he tied the bag up, and then he dropped it in my yard, and he, and he walked on. Now, my dad, who is deceased, my, I still talk to my dad, but my dad, my dad died the week before the 9-11 attacks. I could envision my dad up in heaven going, well, boy, what are you going to do about that? You're going to let the guy just, just drop it in your yard? You're just going to let that happen? So I went out. I went out and I picked up the bag and I start chasing this guy down the street, yelling, hey, hey. He it's turns okay. around. He sees me and says, it's okay. It's okay. I said, no, it is not okay. I catch up with him. He says, yeah, because I'll pick it up on my way home rather than just carrying it. I'm so, oh, oh. So the guy's yard that I'm in, my neighbor's yard that I catch this guy in, he's mowing his lawn. And uh, so I just dropped it in his yard. <laughs> <laughs> and told him he's looking at me like what are you doing and i said it's okay it's okay <laughs> he'll pick it up on his way back yeah yeah and i've got a brooklyn bridge to sell you yeah right. <laughs> when i was growing up when i when i was growing up and we had a, a a dog when i was a little kid we lived in a place that had a nice big backyard and in the back of the backyard there was a place of the some trees and bushes and that's where the the dogs went and you know what it became fertilizer or whatever it did, but nobody paid much attention to it. But right. today, but today you have the, like, this etiquette of, uh, right. well, first of all, glad people yeah. pick it up. But if I wanted to pick up turd, I'd either ask my kids to have more children and we'd change the diapers of my grandchildren, or you know, some, I want something that will eventually grow up that I can talk to. <laughs> if I'm going to pick up their, their stuff. Well, you can, you you know, well the, the, the problem, the problem, yeah, here's the thing is when I go out on poop patrol, typically Sunday afternoons, I'll go on poop patrol with a shovel. I got two big dogs. Ah. So I've got like a, a like a 50 pound bag of dog food empty that I save and I put all this in here and I throw it in the trash. But the but the deal on that is they will watch me pick it up. And I'm thinking the whole time going, all right, now, so they tell me I'm above you in the food chain. Right. But who's picking up who's poop? Yeah. Or they'll put down a fresh one for me. Here, Dad, here's another one for you. So yeah. I don't know. That's a, but it's, you know, it's the kind of the thing, too, the difference maybe with husbands and wives about their dogs. I love my dogs, but they are all about their mom. Um, yeah. and, and so Marianne, my wife, will come home sometime from the grocery store, and she'll say, I found this new food. I think the dogs may like it better. It's some kind of gourmet something, something. And I have to say, you know, you know they eat poop, right? I mean, you know this is what they eat, and now you think this is going to taste better to them. And who's the person who taste tests this stuff going, I think the dog's going to like this. I don't know. Uh, there's a job I could do in retirement. There's, pro there's, pro there's probably a point now at which we should uh, start winding this down because I almost was going to ask you if you or your wife pick up each other's poop and... And I, I didn't even uh, want to go there because I'm too much of a gentleman. I think you went there, though. Okay. Oh, did, yeah, did I, I, think, I think you're right. Once you hit the, the discussion part about poop, maybe we're on a downhill slide. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, all, all I can say is I don't think it's got anything to do with age. <laughs> I, I think dog loving is dogs. It's dogs. It's got nothing to do with age. It's about... Uh, it's not about embracing the boom. It's just dogs. Dogs oh, wait. is dogs. I have, to, I have to learn it like uh, uh, Bill does it. You cover part of your face. You have a way of doing that. It's oh, pretty oh, consistent. I, okay. I, like it, I like it so that it's kind of like halfway. Yeah. Figure that out. All right. So, okay, that's... Let me ask you a non-poop question. Uh, <laughs> uh, where can people get one of those lovely cups? Are they available on the market or do you have to get Are it from a the drug dealer? I've got a garage full of them. Uh, you can get to them uh, via the internet. It's called the World Wide Web. And you can go there uh, by going to Bill Jordan Embrace the Boom dot com. And what is Embrace the Boom? Well, you know, people who are watching Celebrating Act Two know what that is. And I'm talking about baby boomers. And as we get a little bit older, there are people who are just kind of riding out the clock and uh, running out the clock. And I don't prefer to do that. I think I've still got, I know that I've still got dreams to dream and goals to set and embracing where I am in my life. So this is my little. Anchor for the day. Uh, this is where I start my day with my 
with my coffee. And then later on through the day, it'll hold 15 ounces or whatever you want to put in it. Uh, by the way, I'm also in the works. Uh, a book is in the making of Embrace the Boom. So oh, uh, that should be being released prior to the holidays. So I'll keep you posted on that, too. Great. Good. Well, good. then, one last toast to Embrace oh. the Boom. Well, good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing your dog stories with us. Hey, man. We, em we embrace the boom. We like we love our dogs, and wherever, wherever you are in your life, especially if you are a boomer, remember to live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Thanks for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.